Hello viewers. Um, so, we saw uh, various versions of Cauchy's theorem and uh, in this session uh, we will see we will start some applications of uh, Cauchy's theorem. So, as I mentioned earlier uh, Cauchy's theorem is central uh, to the analysis of uh, complex analytic functions. So, um, today using Cauchy's theorem uh, we will first uh, derive uh, the Cauchy's integral formula. Okay. So, um, so here is uh, Cauchy's integral formula. So, um, first uh, for this purpose uh, and from now on uh, we will assume a contour will be positively oriented and we will consider simple closed contours. Okay. So, uh, let me say that in order. So, consider uh, uh, simple closed uh, curves okay, contours okay, uh, and then um, with positive okay, uh, orientation or clockwise or counterclockwise rather. orientation. Okay. So, counterclockwise with respect to the points on the inside of the uh, simple closed contour uh, like we have defined earlier. Okay. So, the orientation matters now, it did not matter for uh, Cauchy's theorem, but it matters for uh, what we are going to do. Okay. So, here is the uh, statement of uh, the theorem which gives the Cauchy's integral formula. So, let f be uh, an anal analytic function, okay. f be analytic inside okay, and on uh, a positively oriented uh, uh, simple closed uh, smooth contour gamma. Okay. Uh, then, if A is uh, inside of gamma, okay, then f of A is equal to 1 by 2 pi i, we get a formula for f of A, it is in terms of the integral uh, of f, contour integral of f this way. Um, so, it is the contour integral of f of w by w minus a d w, where w is the uh, variable of integration. Okay. So, 1 by 2 pi i times that contour integral gives you the value of f of a, okay, where a is a point inside the simple closed curve. Okay. So, um, the requirement that the contour gamma is smooth uh, can be dropped, okay. we can assume a piecewise smooth contour. Uh, but uh, for simplicity, uh, I'll assume a smooth contour. Okay, so the intuitive picture we can keep in mind is the following. So here is a schematic. So suppose this is a uh, simple closed contour oriented in the counterclockwise direction. If A is a point in the inside, okay, then the value of um, f well f should be analytic inside and on the curve, which means it's analytic in a set in an open set containing uh, this curve gamma and the inside. Okay. So, if f is analytic there, then the value of f at the point A uh, is given by the integral uh, on the right hand side of the statement of the theorem. Okay. So, here is the proof of uh, this theorem. So, uh, the proof well for the proof what we do is um, since A is in the inside, okay, inside of um, A belongs to uh, belongs to the inside of gamma. Okay. Uh, clearly, uh, there is a disk about A, uh, okay, which is contained in the inside. Okay. So, there exists an R positive such that B A R ok 
okay uh, is contained in the inside of the curve gamma recall that's the notation for the inside of the curve uh, gamma okay and then um, that is because uh, once again recall that uh, the inside of a curve is uh, is an open set okay so if you have a point in there then there's a ball surrounding it uh, an open ball of uh, some radius surrounding it uh, which is contained in the set okay so um, for any r strictly less than r then okay so here is a like i pictured above there is a uh, open ball of radius capital r around a okay so for any r strictly less than r what we can do is uh, we can take the integral f of w by w minus a dw okay this is the integral which appears in the uh, formula in the statement of the theorem okay and uh, this is equal to the integral um, over gamma or um, gamma a r okay recall that notation that notation uh, stands for gamma a r stands for a circle of radius r uh, centered at a okay so recall this gamma a r stands for uh, okay is a is a circle of radius r centered at a okay and uh, more precisely uh, this is given by gamma of t is a plus r e power 2 pi i t where t is in between 0 and 1 okay if you want to be precise this is your uh, uh, gamma of ar okay gamma of ar okay so please note there is some uh, there is some ambiguity because i'm using gamma here and on the right hand side but uh, here i'm using the notation gamma of ar okay to be uh, to be precise okay and then uh, this equality here um, follows from a version of Cauchy's theorem we saw earlier. Okay, so this is true by uh, Cauchy's theorem for a um, simple closed curve. Okay, for a simple closed contour. So um, and then um, or more precisely, that's by the uh, deformation theorem, which uh, we call. Cauchy's theorem for a simple closed contour. Okay. And then uh, by that, um, so we will preserve this equality, we will call this a 1 okay. and um, also uh, the integration over gamma a r okay, of uh, f of a by w minus a d w. Okay. This is equal to f of a times the uh, contour integral over gamma a r uh, the circle of radius r about a of 1 by w minus a d w essentially because f of a is a constant okay, and this is equal to f of a times 2 pi i because recall that this is uh, the fundamental integral which we computed uh, a few sessions ago. Okay. So, uh, that the value of that integral is uh, 2 pi i. So, uh, so, this we will store as equation 2. Okay. So, the integration of f of a by w minus a uh, on this circle is uh, 2 pi i times f of a. Okay. So, now uh, we will estimate the uh, difference 1 by 2 pi i times f of w by w minus a d w over gamma over the simple closed curve gamma which is given minus f of a. So, let us uh, estimate this difference the, uh, this in absolute value is uh, equal to 1 by 2 pi i okay, in absolute value uh, integration contour integration over gamma uh, a r f of w by w minus a d w minus f of a. 
Okay. What I have done is converted the integral uh, in the first expression to this integral uh, in the second expression by using our equation 1. So, notice that I have changed this contour integral on gamma to contour integral on uh, gamma a r. Okay. So, that gives us uh, well then um, that is equal to uh, the modulus of 1 by 2 pi i uh, integration of f of w by w minus a gamma a r okay, uh, minus f of a d w. Okay. So, what I am doing is I am using uh, this is by 2. I am using the fact that f of a uh, let me go back to here. I am using the fact that f of a is 1 by 2 pi i times uh, the left hand side here. Okay. So, and I am using the left hand side to bring the integrands together. So, I get uh, 1 by 2 pi i times f of w minus f of a by w minus a like that. Okay. So, so then by the estimation theorem we had earlier, this is less than or equal to 1 by 2 pi times the uh, integration over the circle gamma a r of the modulus of f of w minus f of a by modulus of w minus a and modulus d w. Okay. So, that is by the estimation theorem and uh, this is equal to 1 by 2 pi uh, times uh, m. Let me uh, say what m is, m is the maximum value or the supremum of modulus of f of w minus f of a uh, on the circle. I okay. uh, will write that down okay. uh, times the integral or gamma a r. So, this has to be less than or equal to okay, this, has, this is less than or equal to 1 by modulus of w minus a uh, mod d w okay, here. So, I will write in parentheses here m is the uh, supremum of the set of modulus of f of w minus f of a such that w belongs to uh, uh, well w is equal to a plus r e power i theta 0 less than or equal to theta less than or equal to 2 pi. Okay. So, it is the value it is the, it's the supremum of uh, the, the modulus of these differences, where w is on a circle of radius r around a. Okay. So, um, so, m is that and, um, and so from this estimate we get this is less than or equal to 1 by 2 pi. Well, let me parameterize now. Uh, so, so, this gives you uh, gamma a r when I parameterize I get modulus of w minus a is simply r okay, and then modulus of d w uh, will give me uh, r d theta, where theta now ranges from 0 to 2 pi. So, this, this is 0 to 2 pi I am parameterizing use, using r and theta. Okay. So, r cancels. So, uh, we get this is less than or equal to 1 by 2 pi times m times uh, 2 pi which is n. Okay. So, all in all uh, what we get is 1 by 2 pi i times the integration over gamma of f of w by w minus a uh, minus d w minus f of a. This in absolute value is less than or equal to m, where m is this uh, supremum that I mentioned earlier. Okay. So, now uh, by continuity of f at a, f is analytic. So, it is definitely continuous at uh, the complex number a. Okay. So, uh, by continuity of f at a, um, this supremum uh, okay, uh, as, as r tends to uh, 0, um, f of a plus r e power i theta no matter what 
that tends to f of a. Okay. So, uh, this supremum m of the uh, modulus of differences. Okay. So, uh, notice m is this the supremum of the modulus of these differences. Okay. This tends to 0 as r tends to 0. Okay. And uh, in this let me call this estimate 3 in 3 in 3 uh, r h s okay, depends on r little r okay, because the supremum does okay, whereas, uh, l h s does not. Okay. So, so, what you can conclude is that you can uh, take the limit as r goes to 0 and you can uh, you can see that the left hand side is arbitrarily small. Okay. So, L h s can be made arbitrarily small by choosing small enough r little r. Okay. So, in conclusion we can say that uh, since the left hand side is arbitrarily small, uh, so the left hand side has to be equal to 0. Okay. So, uh, so, 1 by 2 pi i times the integral um, or gamma of f of w by w minus a d w okay, has to equal uh, f of a and which is what we want. Okay, so, that is the proof of this theorem. So, what one can uh, what one can uh, look at this as is as follows one can uh, vary this point a in the inside of this curve simple closed curve gamma okay, and think of uh, the integral representation as giving a formula in terms of integration. Okay. Uh, so, what I mean is we will instead of saying uh, a we will replace it by a variable z and say that f of z is 1 by 2 pi i times integral over gamma f of w by w minus z d w okay, for z belonging to the interior or uh, yeah, the inside of the simple closed curve gamma. Okay. So, you can imagine this z varying on, on the inside of this uh, gamma curve gamma okay, and still this uh, or, or this integral on the right hand side gives a formula an integral formula okay. and so uh, this is referred to as uh, Cauchy's integral uh, formula. Okay. And let us see some examples using uh, this Cauchy's integral formula. Okay. So, here is um, an example. Okay. Uh, evaluate uh, integral gamma 3 2 z plus 1 by z minus 2 d z. Okay. So, by gamma 3 2 once again uh, I mean uh, a circle of radius uh, 3 centered at I apologize that should be gamma 2 3. Okay. So, gamma 2 3 is a circle of radius uh, 3 centered at the point 2. Okay, at the complex number 2 and um, oriented in the uh, counterclockwise okay, in the positive direction. Okay. So, recall that uh, how we parameterize this circle is immaterial uh, because contour integrals are uh, are uh, free of uh, this parameterization or they are independent of how you parameterize the circle. Okay. So, Cauchy's integral formula allows you to think of uh, this as 
z plus 1 by z minus 2. So, you consider uh, the analytic function z plus 1 okay, and then uh, this integral can be represented or uh, can be thought of as uh, integration of f of z by z minus 2 d z. Okay. So, considering the appropriate uh, analytic function uh, is, is important. Uh, clearly, that function z plus 1 is an entire function recall an entire function is analytic on all of complex plane. So, this is an entire function. So, it is definitely analytic on gamma and on the inside of gamma. Okay. And so, uh, uh, this formula above let me go back okay, this formula above tells you that uh, the value of this integral is 2 pi i times Okay, that, that constant 2 pi i uh, multiplies to the uh, left hand side now times the value of the function f of z at the point z equals 2. Okay. Notice that notice that uh, z minus 2 this point 2 okay, which is uh, which is a singularity in the denominator. Okay. Uh, notice that 2 belongs to the inside of the curve gamma 2 3. Okay. That is uh, why we are using this formula okay. and then uh, this is uh, 2 pi i times the value of z plus 1 at the point z equals 2. Okay. So, this is 2 pi i times uh, 2 plus 1 3 which is 6 pi i. Okay. So, then uh, Okay, that is one example. Let us see uh, another kind of computation of this sort. Okay. So, consider uh, yeah. so or evaluate evaluate integration contour integration cos z divide, divided by z squared plus 1 d z okay, over gamma, where uh, gamma is a simple closed curve, okay, uh, smooth let us say. Okay. So, simple uh, closed curve uh, smooth. Okay, uh, oriented in the positive sense, lying in the upper half plane. So, uh, okay, uh, and containing I. Uh, in the inside of gamma. Okay, that is a vague description, but that is enough to evaluate uh, the said integral. Okay. So, I could have taken a more uh, concrete uh, curve gamma, but this is a more general curve gamma. Okay. So, what this is telling you is that uh, here is the upper half plane okay, for positive values of the imaginary uh, part okay. and then um, what is important is i is in the inside of the curve. Okay. So, you have a, a simple closed curve oriented in the positive sense okay. and it surrounds i is uh, what is important. Okay. So, uh, i is in the inside of gamma. Okay. Now, we want to evaluate uh, cos z by z squared plus 1 dz. Okay. So, by uh, Cauchy's integral formula. Okay. So, well before I use the Cauchy's integral formula I apologize. Let me look at the integral let me look at the integrand cos z by z squared plus 1 dz. This can be written as the integration of cos z by z minus i times 
z plus i dz. Okay. So, uh, you see that uh, there are two uh, values of uh, z which make the denominator 0. Okay. One of them is i and the other one is minus i okay. and since minus i lies in the uh, lower half plane, we do not have to worry about that uh, cos z over. Um, so, I will write this as cos z over z plus i okay, divided by z minus i dz. Okay. So, that uh, cos z by z plus i if you choose that to be your f of z, okay, f of z equals this is analytic on an open set containing gamma union the inside of gamma. Okay. So, actually that, sh that should be the trace of gamma, gamma star union inside of gamma. Okay. So, this is gamma star. So, here is the trace of gamma okay, and on the inside cos z by z plus 1, z plus i is analytic. Okay. So, by, uh, by Cauchy's integral formula now. Since i is on the inside of gamma, uh, this uh, cos z by z plus i by z minus i dz okay, is 2 pi i times the value of the function cosine z by z plus i evaluated at z equals i. Okay, that is your uh, value of the integral. Okay. So, this is 2 pi i times um, cosine i by 2 i. Okay. So, this can be simplified uh, cosine i uh, well first 2 i cancels with 2 pi i for a pi and then cosine i is recall e power i times i uh, plus e power i minus i times i divided by 2. So, that gives you um, pi times e squared plus 1 over 2 e. So, that is your uh, okay. So, that is what the integral uh, evaluates to. Okay. So, uh, this is another example of how to use the Cauchy's integral formula uh, to compute integrals. So, gamma 0 to 1 by z squared plus z plus 1 dz. Okay. So, evaluate this integral. Well, uh, this is gamma 0 to okay. notice that uh, well first let me see where the denominator is 0 z squared plus z plus 1 is equal to 0 when um, z is minus 1 plus or minus square root of uh, minus 1 square minus 4 divided by 2. So, that gives me minus 1 plus or minus square root 3 i by. Okay. So, both of these are uh, the cube roots of unity, okay, the uh, non unit cube roots of unity. So, what that means is um, if you take 0 and a circle of radius 2, okay, this is a circle of radius 2 this is 2 okay, which is your gamma 0 2. Okay. Then definitely both these uh, numbers uh, minus 1 plus root 3 i by 2 and minus 1 minus root 3 i by 2 both of them lie inside uh, this contour, okay, this simple closed contour. So, then we cannot evaluate this, uh, this integral directly by using Cauchy's integral formula, but what we can uh, do is we will call these two roots alpha and beta okay. and what we can do is uh, use uh, partial fractions to separate uh, 
the factors in the denominator. So, allow me to factorize this as z minus alpha times z minus beta over gamma 0 to d z ok. And now, I will uh, separate this into uh, partial fractions the integrand into partial fractions. So, this is uh, integration over gamma 0 to of um, 1 by alpha minus beta. So, I am using partial fractions this is 1 by z minus uh, alpha minus 1 by z minus beta and then d z. Okay. So, this gives me 1 by alpha minus beta times. Uh, so, let me use a flower parenthesis uh, integration over gamma 0 to 1 by z minus alpha d z minus integration over gamma 0 to I am separating the integ integrands as well 1 by z minus beta d z. Okay. So, since alpha and beta are both in the uh, interior of uh, uh, on in the inside of the curve gamma gamma 0 to what I can do is I can use Cauchy's integral formula on either of these integ integrands. Okay. So, this gives me 1 by alpha minus beta times uh, 2 pi i times well uh, here the analytic function is 1. Okay. So, that gives me just 2 pi i okay. or you can um, think of it as uh, as using the fundamental integral. Okay. So, uh, in either way we get uh, 2 pi i minus 2 pi i. Okay. So, uh, using Cauchy's integral formula. Okay. So, we are using Cauchy's integral formula. Okay. So, this gives us a 0. Okay. So, uh, we can break the uh, given integrand in using partial fractions and then use the Cauchy's integral formula to evaluate this problem. The viewer is encouraged to, um, uh, to do more problems of this sort or of evaluation of integrals. So, next let us look at the following application of uh, Cauchy's uh, theorem. So, this is uh, Leo Wills theorem. Uh, Leo Wills theorem asserts that uh, if f is a uh, bounded entire function, then it is constant. Okay. So, let me state it let f be an entire uh, function that is bounded, okay. then f is a constant function. Okay. So, recall what uh, uh, an entire function is, it is an analytic function, it is analytic on all of the complex plane. Okay. So, uh, and a bounded function recall what a bounded function is, uh, the modulus of f of z is less than or equal to m for all z belongs to c. Okay. So, let me write that down uh, recall uh, f is bounded means that uh, uh, modulus of f of z okay, or let me say there is an m, there is a real number m capital M such that it has to be greater than 0 of course, okay, greater than or equal to 0 okay, such that. Um, so, greater than or equal to 0 such that modulus of f of z is less than or equal to m for all z belongs to c. Okay, in this case c. So, normally speaking z belongs to uh, domain of f. Okay, that is what f is bounded means. Okay. So, in this case since the domain is all of the complex plane modulus of f of z is less than or equal to a fixed real number m. Uh, for all z belongs to c okay so so uh, modulus of f of z is less than or equal to m for all z belongs to c 
Okay. And uh, using this what we can do is let, let us start by fixing a comma b complex numbers a and b. Okay. So, now these are these are two fixed complex numbers. We will prove that the value of f at a is equal to the value of f at b by proving that the modulus of f of a minus f of b can be made arbitrarily small. Okay. So, that is the standard uh, way of proving this. Okay. So, um, we will estimate the modulus of f of a minus f of b. Okay. So, using Cauchy's integral formula, uh, this is equal to well what is f of a well in order to use cauchy's integral formula i need uh, a contour okay so let me take a large circle okay so let me take uh, consider consider gamma 0 r recall what that means it's a circle of radius r centered at 0 okay for large r okay for some for a large r. How large we will see later. Okay. We want it to be as large as uh, uh, we want uh, to make f of a minus f of b in the modulus uh, smaller. Okay. So, I uh, will make that precise in a moment. Okay. So, here uh, modulus of f of a minus f of b is equal to by the Cauchy's integral formula 1 by 2 pi i times the integration over gamma 0 r f of z by z minus a d z minus 1 by 2 pi i times uh, the integration over gamma 0 r f of z by z minus b d z. Okay. Assuming that assuming a b belong to interior of gamma uh, interior of this gamma 0 r. Okay. So, by choosing large enough r of course, we can assume that these fixed uh, a and b lie inside of this uh, gamma 0 r. Right. So, um, here I have to close the parentheses. So, here is uh, the picture here is a, here is a, here is 0 firstly, okay. here is a, here is b let us say, you choose a large enough circle such that both uh, centered at 0 such that both a and b lie in on the inside. Okay. And uh, what is also important here is that, um, here is your gamma 0 r. Okay. So, if you consider this line connecting 0 and uh, a and extend it all the way until r, you notice that uh, the distance between a okay, and this point here, this cross mark point here okay, uh, gives you the uh, minimum distance between uh, a and any point on the circle. Okay. So, uh, what I want to say is that notice that the modulus of uh, since I am using z I guess yeah, modulus of z minus a okay, is uh, greater than or equal to uh, r minus the modulus of a. Okay. So, from the picture here is the modulus of a okay. and then this is the distance r. Okay. r minus modulus of a refers to this piece which I am overwriting okay, the, the wiggly piece okay. and then the modulus of z minus a is greater than or equal to r minus mod a for all z uh, on Okay, belonging to gamma 0 r. Okay, so, this technically should be the trace of gamma 0 r, okay, but gamma 0 r I confuse it constantly with the trace. Okay. So, uh, for all points on the circle that is the minimum distance. Likewise, okay, likewise 
modulus of z minus b is greater than or equal to r minus uh, modulus of b for all z belongs to the trace of gamma 0 r. Okay. So, uh, we will keep this aside, we will need this estimate okay, uh, in a moment and then let us go back to our estimate of modulus of f of a minus f of b. Okay. And then uh, using Cauchy's integral formula, we got that. So, um, modulus of f of a minus f of b is less or is equal to the modulus of 1 by 2 pi i times uh, the integration on gamma 0 r. Let me club the integrands now. Okay. So, I get uh, f of z times uh, a minus b by z minus a times z minus b d z. Okay. So, I am uh, I am adding these two integrands okay, or subtracting so to say okay, and then I get this expression. Okay. The, the common denominator is z minus a times z minus b etcetera okay. and then I get a minus b in the numerator. So, this is by the uh, estimation theorem less than or equal to 1 by 2 pi times the integration on gamma 0 r of the modulus of f of z times the modulus of a minus b by modulus of z minus a times the modulus of z minus b times the modulus of d z of course. Okay. So, this is uh, recall that f is a bounded function which means the modulus of f of z is less than or equal to uh, some fixed number m. So, uh, whether z belongs to gamma 0 r or not this is less than or equal to 1 by 2 pi times m times integration on gamma 0 r. Um, well, mod a minus b is also a fixed number. So, I get 1 by mod z minus a mod z minus b. Okay. And uh, we also saw that the modulus of z minus a for z belonging to gamma 0 r okay, is uh, greater than or equal to r minus modulus of a, which means 1 over mod z minus a is less than or equal to uh, r minus 1, 1 over r minus uh, mod a. Okay. So, this is less than or equal to 1 by 2 pi times m times the modulus of a minus b okay, times 1 divided by r minus modulus of a times r minus modulus of b okay, times the integration on gamma 0 r of modulus of dz, which is just the length or the perimeter of the circle uh, of radius capital R. So, this is equal to 1 by 2 pi m times modulus of a minus b times 1 by r minus modulus of a times r minus modulus of b times 2 pi r, 2 pi capital R, excuse me. Uh, so, then um, we can cancel the 2 pi's and see that this gives us m times modulus of a minus b, which are all fixed numbers uh, times 1 by divide the r into one of these factors 1 minus modulus of a by r okay, times r minus modulus of b. Okay. So, uh, now uh, all in all what we have is modulus of f of a minus f of b is less than or equal to this m times modulus of a minus b times 1 by 1 minus modulus of a by r times r minus modulus of b. Okay. So, the left hand side does not depend on r and the right hand side uh, depends on capital R. So, we are free to play with r. Okay. So, as r becomes large and large as r tends to infinity 1 minus modulus of a over r uh, recall um, uh, r is a a and b are fixed numbers. Okay. So, this tends to 1 okay. and uh, r minus modulus of b also tends to infinity. Okay. It becomes arbitrarily large. Okay. So, the denominator in the right hand side expression of the inequality okay, uh, becomes arbitrarily large. Okay. So, r h s of the above 
inequality becomes arbitrarily large okay and uh, so that is how large we want r so uh, however much we want modulus of f of a minus f of b uh, to be smaller okay we will make r that much larger okay so <coughs> that gives us um, that uh, so modulus of f of a minus f of b is arbitrarily small since the rhs tends to uh, 0 as r tends to infinity. Okay. Uh, so, we conclude f of a the modulus has to be equal to 0 okay, which means f of a has to equal the only number with modulus 0 is 0. So, f of a had to be equal to f of b for the above inequality to hold for arbitrarily large r. Okay. So, uh, since a and b were uh, arbitrarily chosen from the complex plane, we conclude that f is a constant. Okay? So, f is a constant function. Okay? So, we prove this by taking two different uh, uh, points a and b and showing that the value of f at those two different points is equal. Okay? And the proof of course, used uh, Cauchy's integral formula. Okay, and Liouville's theorem is uh, okay, very useful. Uh, so, for example, it gives us a quick proof of the fundamental theorem of algebra. Okay, so here is um, so here is the uh, fundamental theorem of algebra. which can be quickly deduced from uh, Liouville's uh, theorem. Okay. So, let uh, p of z be a non constant polynomial with complex coefficients okay. then uh, there exists an A, a complex number A, okay, such that f of A is 0 or p of A rather is 0. So, there is a 0 of uh, this polynomial, non constant polynomial. Okay. So, applying this repeatedly, we get that uh, consequently uh, a complex uh, polynomial of degree n greater than uh, 1 okay, has n roots uh, not necessarily distinct in C. So, that the degree tells us for n greater than 1, the degree tells us the number of roots uh, possibly uh, non distinct ones uh, of the polynomial. Okay. So, that is uh, for example, not true for polynomials, real polynomials, right? because x squared plus 1, uh, the polynomial x squared plus 1 in real numbers does not have uh, any 0. Okay. So, um, so, here is the proof. So, but any complex polynomial, any polynomial with complex coefficients uh, has a root, okay, um, has a 0 okay, and then consequently applying this repeatedly, it has n zeros, where n is the degree, okay, if it is a non constant polynomial. So, here is a proof, uh, let um, okay, suppose, suppose that it does not have a 0, let p be a non constant polynomial and suppose p of uh, z is not equal to 0 for any z belongs to c. So, we will assume to the contrary that p of z is non 0 okay, for any z. Okay. Then of course, uh, we can form the reciprocal 1 by p of z. 
because p is not 0, p of z is not 0, uh, we can form the reciprocal function. Okay. This is um, entire because p is non 0 and p is entire 1 by p is uh, entire by assumption. Okay. So, since this is entire uh, and uh, this will prove uh, is bounded as well. Okay. So, uh, since the polynomial p of z non constant polynomial okay, in modulus will tend to infinity as modulus of z tends to infinity. Right? Consider the leading uh, term for example, uh, the leading term has degree greater than or equal to 1 since it is a non constant uh, polynomial. Okay. Uh, okay, it will have a z uh, with a power greater than or equal to 1 okay, and that tends to infinity and then uh, in modulus and then uh, that will dominate the other terms. Okay. So, this uh, is true. Okay. And then, um, so because this happens, there exists an R okay, for, uh, for a large R, there is an R such that 1 by uh, P of Z okay, is strictly less than 1 for modulus of Z greater than R. Okay. 1 by uh, P of Z big, uh, has to tend to uh, 0. Okay. So, 1 by P of Z in uh, modulus is strictly less than 1 for a really large R, uh, really large modulus of Z. Okay. And then um, on B 0 R bar, the closure of B 0 R itself, okay, 1 by P of Z okay, is a continuous function, it is analytic by assumption. So, this is continuous and hence is bounded, right? because uh, continuous functions on compact sets B 0 R bar is a compact set. Uh, so, continuous functions on compact sets uh, are bounded okay? uh, and, um, and so, 1 by p of z your f of z equals 1 by p of z is bounded on all of c. It is bounded by some number capital M in uh, b 0 r bar okay, and it is bounded by 1 outside of b 0 r bar. Okay. So, uh, the maximum of M and 1 will be the bound for f of z on all of c. Okay. So, f of z is bounded. Uh, uh, so, by uh, Liouville's theorem, okay, we get that uh, f of z is constant. Okay. f of z is 1 by p of z, uh, which implies p of z is a constant function. But by assumption, p of z was a non-constant polynomial. Okay, so that's a contradiction. So uh, contradicts p of z is a non-constant polynomial. Okay, so this cannot be possible, which means that there is uh, a a certain a such that p of a is zero. Okay, so there exists there is an A belongs to C such that P of A is equal to 0. Okay. That is the proof of the uh, fundamental theorem of uh, algebra. Okay. So, um, uh, we will uh, stop this session here. I will uh, give couple of exercises to the uh, viewer. Okay. Here is exercise 1. Uh, let F be entire. Okay, prove that if the modulus of f of z is strictly greater than m uh, in all of c. Okay, what that means is that uh, for z belongs to c, okay, then f is constant, f is a constant function. Okay. That is the first exercise. And uh, the second exercise is to evaluate 
evaluate uh, on the circle of uh, radius 1 centered at 0, the unit circle oriented uh, in the counterclockwise direction, uh, the value of this integral e power a z by z d z and use this to show, use this to show just by simple parameterization that integral from 0 to pi e power a cosine theta uh, cosine of a sin theta d theta is equal to 